G'day guys, Luke here from Australian Off-Road. Um, today we're going to do the muchly anticipated walk around video of the Matrix Pop Top. Um, so this is a customer's trailer, so it has got options on there, I'll just outline that now. Um, as we go around, I'll try and pinpoint what is standard and what's additional. Um, but starting on the outside, we'll do an overview of the outside and then we'll go inside and show you the features in there too. So, um, just on the outside, straight away we'll highlight standard power points. So this is going to be the same on every matrix, whether it's a pop top or a hard top. There'll be a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket outside, TV connection point, and then you'll have two mains inverter points. So when I say mains inverter points, they are predominantly working off mains when you're plugged into mains. When you're off the grid, you turn your inverter on and then they switch over to inverter. This will be the same on all power points inside outside in terms of 240. So standard, um, you can see on the bottom half, this has got the nice Raptor coat into the lower half. Um, so this is an impact coating, which is optional. So one of your more expensive options, a good level of protection down the bottom half. Um, mainly against stone chipping, but also if you're going through the scrub, trees, stuff like that, it's going to prevent as much as it can any damage. Um, so if you take a standard trail, it would be fiberglass, dove grey as we call it, top and bottom. The black shrimp frames is a nice touch that came in um, 18 months back now, which basically means all the outside shroud lockers, um, door frames, shrouds, whichever way you want to say it, will be black now. So they don't stand out as much against the charcoal, whereas they will on a standard trailer when it's all the through. Yep, um, handle on the outside, this is standard on, the, on your matrix range. With the door, we'll just touch on this. So the door obviously will lock on to the catch on the here where when it's windy then it's stopping that movement and um, just on the door in terms of dust sealing it is a one piece fiberglass door with locks top and bottom so this is really for that dust sealing to pull it in square top and bottom and then you'll have the dust cover underneath which is um, obviously preventing dust from coming in through this gas vent which is all to do with internal cooking and um, in this door there is a separate section that will open separately which will allow airflow to pass through here. So this is what you predominantly use during the day. And then what you can do is you can latch this part on and then as you come in and out of the trail through the day, this will just pivot on itself. Yep, so we touched on door, we touched on standard power points. Just moving back again, we've got two gas bottles. So these are just down the back corner. you'll have two 4.5 kilo gas bottles. So that again is standard in matrix, whether it's a pop top or a hard top. And um, this is what's running your hot water system, your gas cooktop inside, and then depending on what you do outside, it may be that external kitchen as well. And um, you'll see here, there is some little stainless steel mounts. Um, now this is for one of the additional options that can be done as well, which is a stainless steel shelf option. So that shelf would clip onto these mounting uh, blocks and then that'll give you a bit of a prep area or a standing area either for your external kitchen or your barbecue area just to stand items on. This on the pop top can also be done down the back near the power point. Um, barbecue area, so on a standard trailer this would just be a blank slide with a utensil bin and um, more aimed at sitting a little Weber or something like that on there, a barbecue. Whereas this particular trailer has got the optional kitchen on. So we've done a few different videos where we've shown you the different kitchen options. This is the twin wok option. So I won't touch too much on that because there is separate videos covering that. Now difference with your matrix pop top over the hard top matrix is that your awning covers this area. So the matrix hard top your awning finishes to the inside of the kitchen so you haven't got full coverage over this. One of the big bonuses with the matrix pop top is it's got a really long awning which will cover this area straight away and that's to do with the shape of the front of the trailer. And um, pole carrier hatch, which we've got access from both sides. So this really, as I say, is a pole carrier hatch, but you don't tend to have too many poles nowadays. So that would predominantly be there for the anti-flat kit if that is optioned into this trailer, which would strengthen the awning. Again, we've done a separate video showing that. That is optional on the matrix, but would be a common pick. So you can start attaching your canvas walls. Uh, there's always an outside tap just down the front near this external area where you can wash off. You'll also see here that you've got a stabiliser leg which you will have in each corner of the trailer which is to stabilise the trailer when you're setting up somewhere for a longer period. 
Uh, two jerry cans on the front, so pop tops in terms of general pop tops, bottoms, odysseys will have similar features on the front, which would be two jerry cans on the front. Um, this trailer comes standard with your diesel heater, so there is a heater tank here as well for the fuel. Um, standard airframe, we've got macerator outlets for the toilet, we've got a red solar connection which is for solar input, which is additional to the 300 watts that's on the roof, and then we've got an Anderson outlet here which is more going to be to a power and appliance. So that could be used for um, an electric mover, let's say, that might get put on the opposite side of the airframe. Um, or it may even be to power a fridge. So if someone's got a second fridge in the back of their car and they want to run it off the trailer, they could plug it in through here. Uh, standard handbrake, you've got your brake safe, which again is a standard feature. DO35 hitch, very good off-road hitch. Your ARC 750 jockey wheels, so these are standard features that we do use because they're obviously so good and in terms of our side, they just work so well on the trailers, especially for manoeuvring the trailers when you look at the jockey wheel. Um, disc brakes are standard, so you will have the disc brake actuated, situated in this area underneath the checker plate. The reservoir has access through the top, so this is where you can check your disc brake fluid level. And then moving round, I will touch on here actually, so big storage area in the front. This is going to be one of your main storage areas in this front boot. And then just above this you do have the wood carrying rack as well, which both these are standard features. So the wood carrying rack, really handy feature just for being able to load firewood up there, whether that's whether you're just using it for a campfire on an evening or whether you're using it to cook off. And um, you can chop your own wood, buy wood, chuck it in there, strap it in nice and tight, and that'll hold in position then for you. Uh, jerry cams we've covered. We've done the pole carrier hatch, which you've got access from the driver's side as well. So just moving down this driver's side, we've got two lockers on this side. Locker number one, let's say, is going to be your pull-out storage bin. So this is a standard feature in this trailer. Uh, there will be items, obviously, that we give you with the trailer, which will come in here on the day. Uh, but this just shows you the box empty, so you can kind of see the space that you're working with. There is a light in here too, so this compartment will have a light, same as the front nose cone, that will have its own little light as well. Now this area as a standard would be just an open storage compartment, so there's nothing in there, it's just an open box. Um, this particular trailer's got air conditioning in, so that shows you if you do go with air conditioning where it lives, and obviously shows that you, that you do lose that compartment as storage. And then just moving down, we've got the hot water system, which this is your gas hot water system cover. So when you're using the hot water system on gas, you would drop this cover down and this would allow it to breathe. Obviously it allows oxygen in there. So during travel, this will be locked away just to stop any stones or dust or anything like that getting in there. So all for dust sealing again. Um, standard water tank, so we did a video the other day just outlining water scenarios and different tank options. So. Your two standards would be your two 140s, which is front and rear, and then this one has got the additional 60. So again, that is optional. Standard rims and tyres, so your Cooper AT3s, they're going to be your standards in your 265-70-17s. And then the steel rims, which we, again, they're standard, just coming in the 17-inch. So there is different options around rims and tyres, but basically we cover everything in a 17 world. And in terms of steel, anything outside of that would then go over to be outsourced, which we can obviously point you in the right direction. Um, power inlet, so this is where you'll charge the trailer when you get home or to a caravan park. So just work on driver's side is your inlet, passenger side is going to be the outlets that you can then plug your appliances into. Uh, moving around to the back, so on the rear, in a standard scenario you would get one spare tyre which would be slap bang in the middle. So this particular customer is going with dual spares. So he's got one of the spares which we've supplied offset, and then he will supply his own second spare, which will sit just to the side here. So there is different options on the rear, but just take into account a standard one would just have the one spare in the middle. You will also, out the back as standard, have external shower points where we do give you an additional rose to plug into there. And then some other little features on the rear would be your radio aerial. So obviously we do give you a stereo in the trailer, which has got AM and FM radio. 
Uh, this is where your aerial would plug into, so the aerial at present is in the trailer. Entirely up to you as to whether you leave it on and you kind of manoeuvre it into a travel position and a, a listening position, let's say. Whereas some people do just take the aerial off and just put it on when they want to use it, so it's not something that can get damaged, obviously, when you are going through them off-road tracks. Um, TV aerial input, so that's where a TV aerial can plug into. So as standard, you've got all the plumbing in the trailer for TV. You just literally need a TV and an aerial, which again, they'll be your options that we do talk about as part of the process. Uh, so we've covered the rear, we've covered the outside. We'll quickly duck inside and do some inside stuff now. So straight away, I'll just highlight here that the electrics um, for eyeball, internal lights, checking water tanks, checking battery status is all on the inside of the door. So if I double click this, we can see that we've now got internal lights. But the beauty of having it here is even though this trailer is predominantly inside cooking or inside living, if you do have an external kitchen and you're spending more time out here, you can quickly access these things to check water levels, check your battery status. So we've got them just on the inside of the door. We've got a fire extinguisher down below for them people that aren't too good at cooking. Um, inside now, obviously you'll see that this is an inside trailer, so this is where it differs from your Quantum. Your Quantum's quite basic inside, being that you're really buying that trailer for outside living. This one is giving you a three burner cooktop inside, so that's a gas cooktop. And then you've got your internal 130 litre fridge, which Ree's just going to show you now as well. So, big inline fridge. Um, this is a compressor fridge, so we don't run on freeway. We try to avoid that for the external venting. So this being that it's a compressor doesn't need any of that external venting. And again, that is 130 litre. So a standard fridge freezer. Standard power points will be on the side of the fridge. So if, if we look at these here, this is gonna be the same in all matrixes, whether it's a pop top or a hard top. So we've got, again, 12 volt SIG socket or cigarette lighter socket as we call them and then you do have a double USB point underneath as well. So standard points there, we've got the 240 connections underneath which again are inverter mains just depending on what you're running on and then just down to the side of that you've got your TV connection point. Um, you'll see in this one it changes a bit from the hard top in that your windows are a lot lower down and you don't have as, as many because you're going to be a lot more reliant on roof skirt and letting some natural lighting through this. So there is pros and cons either way, which is obviously what, what tends to sway people between the models, but the advantage of this will be the airflow that you'll generate through this roof skirt. Also a lot of natural light when you get it outside. Um, down the back we've got the sink with the little strainer at the side. Obviously good amount of storage in here. I'll try and hop out of the way so you can see. Plenty of storage in this trailer, so you've got basically a separate area for your kitchen storage and then you've got area underneath the bed which would be predominantly soft storage, so that would be more your clothing and your linens. Uh, the two pot drawers are standard, so that will give you one deeper drawer like so in the kitchen. And then we also have one of these drawers underneath the bed which would be either for your bigger items, it might be for a doona or something along the lines of that, so they're regarded as standard. Um, down the back we've obviously got the toilet and shower which is one of the big selling features. Uh, so the macerator toilet which is the standard system that we do use. You've got your shower in there so it's not a huge area but it's definitely functional. Um, being that our body width is nice and narrow for capability of where it can go, um, this is a good working space in this back area. Seating area, so you've got the two seats, as we call it, the cafe dinette style seating. The table is removable, so you can easily lift it out on them occasions where you want to kind of put your feet up and relax. There is also the option of getting an infill cushion, which would basically sit in this void. Um, the table would get disregarded completely, so the leg does come out as well. And then the infill cushion would sit in that area to either turn it into a bed or just as a day lounger for some people. Um, you'll see while we've got this off that we've got 240 mains, in, uh, mains inverter points here as well as standard. So again, in all matrixes, that's going to be your standard. We've got access to the tanks here in terms of which tank we're drawing the water from. 
Now, as I touched on earlier, this has got the additional 60, so this is why this has got an additional tap. So you'll always have two for your front and rear tanks, your standards, and then if you option the additional 60 in, you'd have the additional tap. But that is only if it's sharing the plumbing. If it's separately plumbed, then it won't have that tap. So we've touched on this area. Underneath the seats is going to be all your components and electric. So if we work on the seat closest to the shower cubicle, we'll lift this one out. And then you can see in there that that is going to be all the electric. So fuse board, circuit breakers, batteries, charger, distribution box for the Red Arc. So there's a hell of a lot of wiring in there and to be honest with you most people aren't going to spend too much time in here but everything is kind of labelled and you kind of configure your way through there if you do need to get in that area for anything. The seat closest to the bed is going to be components. So this is where your hot water system is going to live. Your diesel heater lives in there. You've got twin filters for the normal system, so all the water that comes in through them two tanks is filtered. You'll see the water pump in there as well, so you may come in this one a little bit more often, which might be to check filters or change filters. Um, outside of that, it may just be to drain the hot water system. So there is a yellow tap there, which you would have just seen. The yellow tap that's on the floor is to drain the water out of the hot water system. There is also an isolation switch in here, so you can shut the water feed off to the hot water system. So it'd be very rare, but that might be an occasion where the hot water system's failed. Um, it's got a leak, for instance, and you don't want to turn your water pump on to avoid pressurizing that for leaks. So what you can do is isolate the water cut feed to that, cut it off, and then turn your pump on, which would allow you to still use the system, just not with hot water. Um, Fan-wise, we've got one fan as standard, which is going to be this one here. So that's on the driver's side at the foot of the bed, we class it. You can then option in your second one if you do want, which you can just see on the passenger side, has almost mirrored what was on the driver's side. So that is an addition and quite a handy addition. Um, a lot of people opt for that. The fans are removable. So we do tend to say during travel, lift them off and chuck them in one of your drawers or underneath your doona. And the beauty of them being um, removable is you can unplug them and actually lift them off and where you've got a 12 volt socket, you can stand them on the base. So you could move this fan around different areas of the trailer as long as you've got a 12 volt socket there to plug it into. Bed area, so standard queen bed, queen mattress, so you don't have to worry about it being specific sizing for different sheets or anything, you can just buy stock standard queen. You've got anchor points down the side of the bed which are there for if you want any bigger items that you can't necessarily store in your lockers or your drawers to actually strap it to the bed during travel. So they come in very handy to them obviously. Once you drop the roof on this trailer you've still got a lot of room in this bed area. All your internal lights are individually controlled so once you turn them on from the Red Arc system you can individually turn one or two off if you're trying to obviously set a bit of a mood tone or if someone's reading in bed you can tend to work off the two above the head of the bed. You've got speakers in the corners, so that's going to be for your sound system. And then just the last thing to touch on would probably be the windows. So the windows, these are all double glazed, so really good for soundproofing, good for dust sealing. So when we work these windows, we press the little clips in, lift the tab, and then this will actually lift out. And where it clicks, it'll hold. So it's got three lockout stages on the bigger windows. Some of the smaller ones will have two. These will have their own midgy screens and their own block outlines. And I think that's a wrap guys. So that covers everything on the Matrix Pop Top. As I say, there is a lot of things in this trailer that are optional. I've tried to outline them, um, but it just gives you a general overview of what the trailer offer and what can be done. And any further questions, you know where we are. Thank you.